Welcome back again. So this is the same Excel sheet that we had in the previous video. Um, I have moved the two graphs on the right to get some more space. I've added one more row at the top. Now, what we have here, what we've done is we have realized that uh, I uh, my data um, has some kind of seasonality where August it's a trough and December, Jan, Feb, there is a peak. Um, so I need to use methods with seasonality and I have already made the data slightly more um, suitable for using time series. So again, I'm, I'm not going to work into the formulas of forecasting methods and I have some videos on exponential smoothing methods in case you're interested in the formula based approach. Uh, but here I'm just going to use the VESA website uh, because I find um, that website uh, very suitable for forecasting. So I'm going to say VESA and exponential smoothing. These are the methods. And I select this page here and it takes me to this page on exponential smoothing. Um, the idea, uh, yeah, you come to this page, it says exponential smoothing free statistics calculator. There are many other ways to come to this page. You can go to time series forecasting, main menu, and then come to exponential smoothing. But once I come to this page, I select, go here, control A, select all this data, delete it, and then go to our Excel sheet, uh, get our data. Remember, we need to get data on only till 2019 because we're trying to fit that. And there is some kind of regularity. 2020, the data goes crazy. So I take this data, come here, paste it, control V. Seasonal period is 12 because I have 12 months. If I have data in four quarters, the seasonal period would be four. Um, if I have um, bi-monthly data, seasonal period could be six. If I have hourly data, seasonal period could be 24 and so on. But this VESA website would not be useful for that um, hourly seasonality. Um, I need a triple exponential smoothing. If I have only random variations in my data, I select single exponential. If I have randomness and a trend, I select double exponential. When I have single double, when I have randomness, trend and season, I select triple, which I have season. I'm going to create additive um, uh, seasonality. We'll also check multiplicative in a bit. And I want the outcome as a CSV file. So I select that. And um, yeah, that's about it. And then I say compute. So it's going to compute, create a CSV file, download it for me. And um, yeah, here is my CSV file. I get this file. I'm going to rename the tab as additive because uh, it sometimes gets confusing. Uh, I have this data, I have the fitted values. The fitted values start from the 13th data point. Now, it starts from the 13th data point because the first 12 data points are used to calculate the initial values of the season. And so we don't have the fitted values for the first 12 data points. So I select um, all these data points and uh, bring it here to our um, Excel sheet and paste it from point number 13, which is the 1st of January 2020. I'm going to select these three cells, merge it, and say this is triple additive. That's the method. And this column is fitted for additive. Uh, the first thing I need to check is for bias. I cannot have too much bias in my data, right? Bias is the sum, running sum of errors between actual and forecasted. Because if the data is too positive or too negative, that means I, if it's too positive, I need to increase the base by a little bit. Um, you know, so I need to work around that, but it cannot be too positive or too negative. So let's find the deviations and the sum of those deviations is the bias. Increase the column width by a bit equal to um, the actual, which is the deaths per day, minus the fitted value, which is this. I have the biases. These top values do not matter, so I'm deleting them. 
and also these values of 2020 and after that don't matter so i'm going to delete them because we've not used 2020 in our calculations so i'm going to delete them and then i find my bias which is the running sum of all these values And I get 3,500. My daily data is around 8,000 and 3,000, that's okay. You know, one or few more, I would get to 3,500 approximately. It's not a huge bias that I have. So I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. Uh, we can use many different methods of forecasting to, to find the accuracy of the fitted values. I'm going to use something which is called as mean absolute deviation. Again, there are other videos for uh, methods of forecasting. So I'm going to find absolute deviation and then find the mean for that. The absolute deviation is equal to ABS, the absolute values of these numbers. And then I'm going to delete, and this is called MAD, mean absolute deviation, which is equal to the average of all the deviations. It's mean, right? Mean absolute deviations. I already found the absolute deviations. So I'm going to find their mean. Perfect. It gives me a, a deviation of 129. I'm going to delete these other values which I do not use. So I have uh, the mean absolute deviation for additive method. Um, I can use, I'll do the same thing. Just like triple additive, I'm going to do triple multiplicative. I'm going to work faster on this. I have the triple multiplicative. I will have similarly three values, fitted, mul multiplicative multiplicative I would have next I have the apps the deviation and then I have absolute deviation Perfect. I have these values. I am going to go back to our VESA site. Everything stays the same. I need a CSV output. Uh, only thing is in, in place of addition, I, can, I would do a multiplicative method and then ask it to compute. It would work again. The same process. Give me fitted values for my multiplicative. I come here, rename this as multiplicative so I know what I have. I take these fitted values, select them, and again, if you see, it starts from 13th data point. Select all these data points. Go to our Excel sheet and paste the fitted values here. Uh, and I would find the deviation, which is the actual deaths per day minus the fitted values. I need to delete these values on the top, which don't make sense for us. And I would also have to delete the values here and the 2020 values. Go back at the top, find my bias. I can use the same formula. Uh, it won't work because the cell escape. It should work. So I have a bias which is lesser. So the bias tells me that this could be a better method, but let's find out the mean absolute deviation. Um, so I find the mean absolute deviation. I can copy these numbers here. The formulas would 
accordingly align I don't need these numbers go down I don't need these numbers also and I have mad or mean absolute deviation which I calculate I need to redo this mean absolute deviation because it's taking um, yeah it's it's about the same but uh, let, let me find out if I if the formulas are correct fitted multiplicative so yeah assuming that uh, it cannot be there is some error just give me a minute this should be equal to abs of these numbers deviation these deviation two yeah so it should be these numbers it's 125 correct so now my mad also mean absolute deviation for triple multiplicative is lesser and so what this video is telling me is that in in my data set if, if i just compare between triple additive and triple multiplicative triple multiplicative is a better method um, to use in this case uh, if you want to explore find out other methods of forecasting find the fitted values and, and use that you could do that but this is the idea use suitable methods find the method find the accuracy and whichever method gives you the highest accuracy for fitted method is the ideal method for uh, you to use in your forecasting